Nigeria's Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, on Thursday announced that the planned removal of fuel subsidy in June 2023 has been suspended. She added that preparatory works will continue in consultation with the state's other key stakeholders, including representatives of the incoming administration. We'll take a look at this today on The Breakfast. We also will be looking at what the issues most prevalent in stopping violence towards children are. Today, we will be uh, asking the question how to battle uh, and stop child abuse in Nigeria. And also, we'll be looking at the papers to see what the headlines are and try to see what comments we can get from our analysts. Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast Friday Flex Edition. I am Maureen. And I am Nyam Ghul. It's good to have you. And like we said, Friday Flex, we're hoping that you're going to flex. Yesterday was really terrible going away from work, wherever you may have been going uh, from to your house. I went from, from here to uh, Jodubega which is a journey of 30, 35 minutes, and worst case scenario should take you uh, 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Guess what? I left here at 4.30. I got home at uh, 20 minutes to midnight. Because it rained. Because it rained, and there was a lot of traffic. So what is the correlation between rain and traffic, and what is the government not doing, or what are we not doing, to make sure that whether it rains or not, we can move freely in Lagos. It was terrible. I mean, 45 uh, minutes journey max, taking more than six hours, it's unheard of. You know, it's something that we know that whenever it rains in Nigeria, there will be serious traffic. And the question you asked is quite germane. What is the government doing or not doing to make sure that this doesn't continue? Because just as you suffered, many people across the state suffered. Yeah, yeah, yeah they did. There are people who they live did. in areas where their roads are terrible. Mm -hmm. And if without the rain, it took them two to three hours to navigate the road. Mm -hmm. When it rains, you mm -hmm. can only imagine what it would take them to get home. Because once it rains, the water covers the bad spots. And so motorists are very careful. Mm -hmm. You don't know where to go in and where not to go in. So it further slows the movement. And that is why when it rains, traffic builds up the more. And so traffic goes haywire. And I, I, do not, I do not understand why even highbrow areas like VI and Lekki, once it rains, it's a terrible sight. There are so many people who, even if they wanted to go home, they couldn't leave their offices because everywhere was flooded. So they just stayed uh, inside their offices and waited for the water to go down a little bit before they can cross into the road, especially if you don't have a car. And some people who even have cars, to enter that water sometimes, it's a, it's a problem for the cars and everything. So I don't really know what government is doing. I think they need to do more to make sure that the drainage uh, system is better, especially mm -hmm. here in Lagos. Yes, people may be in discipline because they throw things into the gutters and all that, but they should think outside the box and see how these kind of problems can be uh, dealt with here in Lagos. Yeah, it all begins and ends with leadership, really. Yeah. And they owe it to the people to steer the direction. Mm -hmm. If you put in place laws, implement them to make sure that the environment is protected. Mm -hmm. I mean, Lagos Island is AKA waterland. Yeah. So everybody knows that's why when it rains, you almost need canoes to paddle through. Mm -hmm coupled with the fact that even the water is not good enough anyway. <laughs> so, and then we live in a country where there's no public water, as it were, because there used to be a time you could find taps in places, you know. You're taking me down memory lane. Yeah, so, so During our secondary school days, we'll play and then go turn on the tap, drink water and yeah. continue playing. Today, who dash you? You, 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 you dare If you don't get money for pure water, you're on your own. <laughs> or you take water from home. Yeah. You know, it's, and then it's not have funny. people to make boreholes for themselves, drill boreholes for themselves. And I hear they are trying to make a bill uh, to come so that you, you have to pay. To be able to drill water in your house, you'll have to pay taxes, you'll have to do a lot of things. Why not just give us the water, let's pay the taxes, and not let us have to be the ones that will have to provide water for ourselves and then pay you the taxes. Don't be like Nepal. 
<laughs> you know, you buy your transformer, you pay bills to them. You, you pay uh, land use charge. Yeah. You buy land. Oh, well, all right. Yes. And then you drill your borehole mm -hmm. and someone comes and tells you yeah. to come and pay tax yeah. on the borehole you drilled in the compound you bought with your own money. How it doesn't it, make it, sense. It doesn't make sense, like you said. So what then are you providing, mm -hmm. in essence, yeah. as government? The receipts for the tax. <laughs> <laughs> It's sad. Okay, well, we live in Nigeria and we thank God for small mercies because um, in Nigeria, everything can be turned into humor. So we can laugh over it. I'm sure that's why we, our mental health is where it is. It could have been worse than the way it is. But we shouldn't be laughing at things that are, are really, really bad. And we need to tell the people that are responsible to sit up. Okay, I give you an example of a very annoying thing. And I'll mention mm -hmm. a name. Uh, the Abia State Governor, um, uh, what's his name again? Abia State Governor Ipazu mm -hmm. came up with a policy that in the primary health care system, when you go there and give birth, the government gives you some money. Guess how much? 500 naira. And then when, when someone who, the person who was interviewing him was asking, 500 naira, Your Excellency, mm -hmm. are you, he said, are you asking me? Do you know what 500 naira will do to a poor woman? Imagine that. And, and I was looking at him like, you know, you are a governor. You were, we are, were elected into office. And then you come out with a policy to help your people. And it's 500 naira for a woman who has gone into labor, uh, delivered a baby that could be a governor tomorrow. And then you're giving her 500 Again, naira. I would say in an OPEC country, Jeez. seventh largest oil producer in the world. If you compare what Nigerians and how Nigerians live with the way people from Saudi Arabia and other oil producing nations, mm -hmm. the way they live, you'd wonder what has happened to us as a people. And when you talk about commerce, you talk about Abba. Abba mm -hmm. is in Abia. Yeah. And the Abia governor is given 500. What kind of thing is that? Abia is a, is a tragedy that we hope would be changed because you know i went to that state some time ago and uh, that was around 2009 for the first time i went to mm. aba and i was eager to see what that place would look like because i've heard a lot about aba uh, you know and i was shocked to see <laughs> the sorry state oh it's is it the true. roads or the heap of refuse mm. oh my god was, you know was i was asking you before we came on air that isn't it tragic that you would have you grow up with all your dreams and aspirations mm -hmm. and become fortunate enough to become the governor mm -hmm. of a state mm -hmm. and you don't leave legacies and all you do is manage to pay salaries and at the end of the day as it's become uh, the case in Nigeria many of the governors are not even able to pay the salaries uh, well, I don't know if, if you use the right words. You said they are not able to. I, I think they just don't want to. That's what that. I mean. <laughs> they are not able to. Because, I, I don't know. They, because this is not like, okay, there are not funds coming up, coming into the state. There are things that you're doing. Misplacement of priorities are there. There are, there are people you're set, settling and all that. And I used to work, uh, let me leave Abia. I used to work at some point with the governor. Uh, of a state mm. and then let me not mention the state before I get lynched um, <laughs> <laughs> we would go out as a press crew and sometimes we wouldn't even have water to drink we would have to buy the water ourselves as a press crew and put in our bus and be drinking so if you don't have water you know you won't have you won't have food and then you won't even have maybe some allowance for going out with the governor sometimes it was very very dangerous but do you know there were there was money always voted for the touts that will come around. Of course. They will come around, hey, oh, God, how is it? <laughs> and they will give them a particular envelope mm -hmm. to go and share. Mm -hmm. And the press people don't have anything, even the water to drink. Nigerians have made the mistake of focusing most of their efforts on the federal government. I have said that repeatedly. <sighs> it's terrible. The states should be focused on, which is why... Uh, our one-time finance min minister, Ngozi okonjo mm -hmm. published the allocations to the states mm -hmm. so that citizens will be able to follow up and question their governors mm -hmm. as to how these funds uh, uh, monies are spent. Mm -hmm. The state governors in Nigeria, most of them are not creative enough. They've not been able to make the states viable enough to be self-sustaining. And that is why we're hearing all this. And the sad thing is, 
He will waste four years doing nothing and then come back to vie for another four years. Mm -hmm. uh, well, when it comes to vie for another four years, and then we will vote. It's our person. Even if he's a thief, it's our own thief. It's our turn to, <laughs> to, to produce a thief. So I don't know. We have to sit up in Nigeria and make our leaders accountable. See what is happening in Sudan right now. Why would people be engaged and not be paid? Why would we even have to hear that kind of a story? Now they told us it, is, it was 5,500 people, and then they've come up with another figure that is more than 3 million people, or Nigerians who are living in Sudan. I, I, I know we mentioned it the other day mm. that we hope that the people who are being, the number being called, they will find out if there are others that went there, whether illegally or anything, but so long as they are Nigerians. But the figure from 5,500 moving to almost like 4 million or 5 million, is outrageous. It is outrageous. I, I, I don't a lot, know. A lot. Um, although I heard that a um, hundred dollars has been given to each of the returnees, uh, totaling to one hundred and forty-nine thousand seven hundred dollars uh, to empower them to get to their homes. Well, numbers. Well, questions as to how many of them are there, how many of them are students, how many of them are not students. How many of them, when they are legally or undocumented, we don't know. Mm -hmm. I guess these are questions we'll be asking at the end of the day when our people have come home first. Mm -hmm. For me, come. that is the important mm -hmm. thing. Let them leave that war-torn zone. Then later we can talk about the money and all of that. Now life matters the most at this point in mm -hmm. time. We know our people and our stories. <laughs> but let our people come home first. Let them be safe. Leave the war-torn Sudan. Come home to us safely then we can begin to analyze uh, the Kobos and the Nairas yeah. and who took the, what we, and who didn't take possibly what. Possibly we can ask them uh, how it was that they, every bus was hired for about 30 million uh, from the calculations I made, <laughs> how much they paid for every bus that was hired mm -hmm. uh, to take them to Egypt. Mm -hmm. You calculated it's about 30 million. And I was asking myself, how much is it uh, to buy a bus, <laughs> a fresh bus? <laughs> no, the question you know? I, I, I'm asking right now is what happened? Why did the buses stop? Mm. But that we'll take a look at later on. Right now, it's time for us to take a look at the theme of the day, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The value of a good deed for the soul. Stopping a wrong where we say it. Mm -hmm. So, well, Nigerian leaders should hear that. And we too should hear that. Because, <laughs> like they say, stopping a wrong where we see it. Like they say, when you see something, say something. Some of these things, we are the people who cause it. Somebody goes to office, steals the money, mm -hmm. comes home, you give him a chief tenancy title. Mm -hmm. We have cost it. Somebody goes there, does a very good job, comes out, and you tell him that he was a fool. Mm -hmm. He should have stolen when he was there. And then you don't recognize them in the society. So what do you think that kind of a person should uh, do when next he has the opportunity? Or the next person who is going there that is seeing you do that? Go, mind, go there with the mindset of representing your, your district, stealing, yeah. Yeah. And making sure you get the larger share of the cake. And, you know, another thing that uh, Nigerians do these days, which is very appalling, is the fact that they find someone in trouble. And instead of jumping to help and rescue, the first thing that comes to mind is how to snap it, how to record it, how to upload it, and be the first person to break the story. It is unbelievable mm. the level of decadence, the level of immorality, the level of lack of love that is being experienced and displayed this day, not just in Nigeria, but across the globe. And like we said, when, when we see something, sometimes we laugh because uh, we turn everything to humor here in Nigeria. That's how, uh, at some point, all of us, including the people who had the power to change things, were laughing because uh, when kidnappers began this thing, it was as if it is because you are trekking. That's how they can kidnap you. It's because you don't have a high gate. That's why they can kidnap you. Now we have one of the trending topics is that bandits have kidnapped Zamfara district head. We've seen also where they've kidnapped uh, lawmakers sitting and ex-lawmakers. We've seen where they've kidnapped people, uh, high-profile people in Nigeria. And then we ask, how did we get here? How did it let this thing to fester in uh, our country? Mm -hmm. The district head of Kusuwar Daji in Kaura Namoda, local government of Zamfara State, Ibrahim Sarkin Fada, uh, was kidnapped. 
And this happened in at his, his residence. In his own house. Yeah. They came early in the morning and shot several bullets yes. and, um, Scared and, and took him away. Yeah. Very but, sad there. Yeah. Well, that kidnapping has become one of the most lucrative, lucrative businesses this, yes. in this part of the world. There was a time when it became so bad that in some parts of the East, we were told that uh, the negotiations got to 30,000 naira. Hmm. Yeah, they'll kidnap people and then you pay 30,000 naira to come take your people. 30,000 oh, naira. Oh dear. Well, <clears throat> okay, uh, we've all already uh, touched on these. Federal government spent 1.5 billion uh, 1. to evacuate 1,500 Nigerians from Europe over Russia Ukraine war. Okay, uh, this is not exactly what we talked about. We were talking about Sudan. Mm. So the 1,500, they spent 1. 1.5 billion naira to evacuate them now this one is not really that much in the news because what nigerians are really what's on the lips of nigerians mm. at this moment is that of the sudan war which has actually become very intense uh, the ceasefire agreement is not respected just as it was never respected in the first and second instances mm -hmm. this time around is still not respected we hear that uh gunfire is still there uh, even uh, it's it's become intensified. Mm -hmm. It's become intensified. Yeah. So Nima also paid uh, one thousand four hundred and ninety seven returnees one hundred uh, dollars each to help them uh, find their way home when they get to Nigeria. Okay, that was for the uh, Ukraine war. One hundred dollars. That is in the black market. It's about seven hundred and uh, fifty naira per dollar. So that will be about seventy five thousand naira. Uh, yeah? What am I saying? Yeah, 75,000 naira uh, for um, each person to find their way to where they come from. Okay, well, I do not know if we have the video of uh, the Nigerian stranded in the Sahara Desert because drivers refused to move on uh, with them. They left them there in the desert because they were not paid. The drivers were not paid. And these drivers possibly... Uh, Maybe Sudanese, maybe Egyptians. <laughs> I don't know uh, where they got the drivers from, but yeah, there you have there you have visuals on the screen. Uh, the children lamenting that they have been left in an unknown zone. Uh, I saw some of the videos trending. Uh, they said they didn't know where they were at that point in time. Imagine that this is totally, totally. You know, so so they they are carrying placards even outside the country. So it has to ge degenerate into the point. This is not good for Nigeria's image. So eventually, we'll, we'll be protesting even outside the country. And how do we even defend the government in things like this? Do we have audio to this visual? These people are corrupt in Sahara. They are corrupt with their water. Our brothers and sisters are in Sahara. They don't have. Tell them what is happening, please. Tell them what you want. Tell them what you want. Tell them what you want. We need to go. We need to go. This is why it's happening. We need to go. They are lying. Listen to them. They are talking to you. They are talking to you. They want to ask you questions. They want to ask. Before we started this journey, we have to go and serve our country. We have to 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 serve our country. Can you even imagine that we are stuck in this desert for four and for five hours? We don't know what state we are. Like we don't know the situation we are. We don't have water. Money has finished. Can you even imagine? And they said they 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 buy they 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 good drivers. They, they said they are not moving their bus. They said they are not moving their bus because they don't give them money. We tell our country to do this one. Look at this. We are stuck in desert. We don't even have compass. I don't know the place. Evacuation is poorly equipped, poorly organized, and the students are here stranded for the past four days. There is no access to food, no access to clean water, no electricity, nothing. And uh, even just as we sit in here, almost everywhere you can hear gunshots. We are not safe. Most of the ladies here, like... We spent days without taking baths. Yes. No enough bathroom, no enough water. 
No water at all. No water. Nothing at all. Nothing. 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 Like we Muslims, yes. look at it. Like no, we have to walk water. very, very no, far no, to fetch this water to perform ablution. Well, there you have those visuals uh, that trended yesterday uh, from Nigerians uh, who are stranded uh, in Sudan, well, on their way from Sudan to Egypt, because that was the plan to move them from Sudan to Egypt, from where air peace mm. would lift them and bring them back to Nigeria. But yesterday we were inundated with visuals and reports of how the buses conveying them from Sudan to Egypt stopped midway and the Nigerian students there began to lament and cry because they didn't know where they were and we began to wonder why on earth will the bus drivers stop? Mm. What went wrong with the arrangements? Um, and was there no money? Were they waiting for checks? Were they... Why? Why? If they had the money to rent the buses a, we suppose that the, the entire money that was voted for that was available. So why were the bus drivers not paid? Because that was the report that came mm -hmm. and they were not paid. Yeah, Who at, was at, holding the money? Exactly. At some point, uh, Abika Dabri, Honorable Abika Dabri, uh, released a tweet wherein she explained that NEMA has gone on to resolve the problems and that the buses had continued to move. And we're hoping we're going to have an update that will gladden our hearts. Uh, 500, uh, 5,500 people now, almost 5 million. Uh, we are yet to see how it's going to be. Why will Nigerians in that kind of number even go to Sudan? That means there are fundamental problems that will make someone to leave a, a country like Nigeria and go to a or country Sudan. that is even poorer than Nigeria. Go to Sudan. <laughs> to Sudan of all places and all that. And, and then we had these same situation, almost the same situation in Ukraine, and people were, were also ferried back home. And this kind of money that was spent on the people, $149,700 was spent on uh, evacuating the people back to Nigeria. And $100 was given to everybody to come home or to go home to wherever they are. Mm -hmm. Does it mean that there are stories we've not still heard from that exercise in Ukraine or why is it that now that they have the experience from Ukraine uh, we were expecting that in Sudan it will be more seamless mm -hmm. and then now they also have help from air peace for free uh, for free so they should have had more more time more more money more logistic support and everything to make sure this thing is seamless and I just wonder yeah, Nigeria makes you wonder, doesn't it? <laughs> Nigeria, we hear you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It is Friday Flex edition of the program. Mm. Maureen will be taking me out today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's Friday. We need to flex and you have to take me out. Well, yeah. let's see how much we can flex. Let's see mm -hmm. how much we can Women flex. Women empowerment. Nowadays, uh, we should be the ones to be spoiled. You know, you take me well, out. Well, unfortunately for bit. you, Nyamgul, I am not a feminist. I like being a woman. I uh, like being soft. I like being pampered. Uh, I like me a strong man in charge, mm. taking good care of me. Uh, I am not a feminist. By strong man, do you mean the muscles or the purse? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's still uh, Friday Flex. Uh, this is The Breakfast on uh, Plus TV Africa. We are going to take a short break. And uh, in that short break, we'll bring you the weather report. When we return, we'll be looking at the papers. Stay with us. Stay with us.